Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And today it's time for the what am I sowing and what am I growing video for March. I've actually split this into two parts. The first one's already been published, which is the what am I growing bit, which is all about the seedlings that we sowed in January and February, basically, uh, that we'll be planting out in March. Um, and this video is about what I'm actually sowing in March, and it's such an important month for us. Um, and it's kind of a little bit nerve wracking as well because it's that month, it's March is the month where we sow all of our main crop brassicas. So that's all the, all the sort of kales and things, cabbages that will see us through summer uh, and autumn. And all of the winter sprouts and collets and kales and all, well, but not the spring cabbages basically, they come a little bit later. Uh, and some of the winter cabbages as well. But it's a pretty substantial proportion of what we're going to eat over the year in brassica terms gets sowed. Uh, and then, of course, it's all the true summer crops. OK, so we're on the computer now and we're actually just looking at the sowing log for February. And pretty much everything that I sowed in February and January is now germinated. And you can see in the photo that's quite a lot of stuff um, and I need to get some stuff planted and I was actually just going through my bed planner today figuring out uh, which beds are coming free over the next couple of weeks and um, it's quite a few so everything's going to plan apart from I've had two failures so the first one is this Carmen onion three whole trays of Carmen onion planted multi sown so three seeds to a cell so that's 360 seeds and not a single one came up. So uh, I've had to buy sets to replace those. And the other one that failed me was this Amazon spinach. I'm not too worried about that one because that was old seed. And I knew it was old seed and the packet had been opened. But uh, I thought, well, rather than throw it away, I will see if it is worth sowing. But apart from that, everything is up and growing pretty well including the batch of brassicas that I had to sow because my January sowing my super early ones uh, all got scorched in the sun and so I've had to re-sow these uh, brassicas so I haven't got any super early <laughs> brassicas at the moment uh, which is a bit of a shame um, so let's move on and let's take a look at March. So bear in mind, not everything on here is what it seems, especially if you're kind of browsing this on the web. And if you look in the description of this video, you'll see a link where you can actually browse the same content that I'm looking at now. And um, yeah, so read the, listen to what i'm saying here so i am sowing just one or two early cucumbers i've still, i've got some early cucumbers going at the moment i'm sowing a couple of more early cucumbers in case the ones i sowed back in uh, february fail me uh, and it's pretty tricky to get good cucumbers at this time of year these are not my main crop um cucumbers and I'm not sowing asparagus, but we should get some delivered and we need to plant it. And so this is just a reminder for me. Um, I keep on sowing spinach. I've got one tray, um, which is will be ready for planting in a couple of weeks. And then this tray is the next succession of spinach. And then I've got a lot of brassicas. And basically, March the 10th is when I'm sowing uh, all of my kind of what you might think main crop brassicas so that's purple sprouting broccoli for summer and autumn uh, red drumhead and red fugo red cabbages for autumn and winter marathon uh, calabrese for summer and autumn hungry gap kale and also Sutherland kale. So these are two kales which are being sown primarily for the Hungry Gap. 
so sort of April, May time, when it's difficult to have ordinary kales at that time. So these two are great, as well as my perennial kales, which are obviously good at that time of year. And then this is not, well, yeah, this is my main crop summer kale, but I'll have subsequent plantings um, in, uh, you know, in a few months time that will see me into autumn and winter. So there's the um, winter boar, which is a curly kale, Nero, black magic, dazzling blue um, and dwarf green. And they're all a nice selection of kales. And then these are such an important crop for me in winter, basically. So I've got my Colettes, which are still my favorite of the winter brassica greens. Um, two different types of sprouts, Brendan and Phil Basket. And I also like planting sprouts just for the leaves. So effectively as a, a spring green or a summer green. And the best way I found of doing that is to plant them in little clumps of three planted about 27 plants in total per square meter. You get an abundance of leaves. You don't get any sprouts. The reason to plant them in a, a bundle of three is it allows you to put one stake in to support three plants. That's the, that's the only reason for that. Um, my next succession of Oregon Sugar Pod um, Molish 2 peas, and that's my third succession so far. And then my first um, succession of sweet corn, and these will only be in the polytunnel. So don't start <laughs> doing sweet corn for outside at the moment. Um, and you know, even in the polytunnel, they'll need to be wrapped up in a little bit of fleece as they grow on there. And then my first succession of dwarf beans, and these won't be in the polytunnel. These will be in a low tunnel, uh, so and they'll have some fleece on. So it'll be fleece, and on top of that, a polythene low tunnel. And then my first succession of climbing French beans, and they will also be in the polytunnel and also wrapped up in a bit of fleece as will the runner beans. So basically lots of beans in an attempt to get them nice and early because I haven't had any beans now since about sometime in October. So I'm quite looking forward to some beans. And um, yeah, this is the way I get them. And some um, celery, again, to be planted in the polytunnel. And sometimes I cheat because the garden center generally has very cheap um, celery and it's a real pain to germinate and pot on and everything celery so sometimes although it's on here as me sowing it if the garden center's got it for sort of £1.25 I probably will buy it from the garden center and then my first two uh, successions of carrots and these are both pelleted seeds and I'm looking forward to sowing these uh, pelleted seeds these will go in a coal frame uh, and the coal frame's currently got lettuces in it um, and so uh, I, I can only sow them once those lettuces are harvested and then another succession of spinach I've got loads of spring onions growing at the moment so I just keep on sowing a tray or so of uh, spring onions and basically for every lettuce that I plant um, I like to plant about five spring onion plants. Um, so that's kind of the metric that I use and I need to plant them into the lettuce beds. And then I've got some leeks and these are the leeks that go all the way around the edge of um, the uh, big beds on Jenny's plot uh, where the uh, brassicas are gonna be planted. So, um, yeah, I don't really have a lot of space that I can dedicate to leeks, um, but the edges of beds is what I'm trying this year. And I've got two batches of those. I've got this one here and I've got this one down here. And if we looked at the details of this entry in the sewing log, you would see that some of those are module sewn um, and there'll be probably three leeks in each module. And some of them will be sewn into bigger containers and then they'll be separated out and dropped into deep holes. So I'm doing both of those techniques to see which one I like best. 
I actually generally prefer the module zone, um, just less faffing around, because I don't mind that whether the leaks have got this long white shaft. Um, I think they're just fine with uh, a green shaft. So, and everybody seems to agree. Um, this is my first uh, succession of uh, courgettes. And uh, that's not the only summer squash that we're sowing, but um, yeah, this will go in a coal frame again under fleece and also in the corners of the polytunnels. So that's interesting. And this is another one where I'm sometimes just tempted just to get them from the garden centre. If I see nice, healthy plants in the garden centre, I think, yeah, why why bother? Because <laughs> they're, you know, they're only the early ones, only the first two or three early ones. And then my next succession of Lediva, um, cucumber, and these will definitely go in the polytunnel, um, but uh, not for not until sometime in April, late April. And then this is the second of the summer squashes, which is uh, centre cut, which is a like a trumpocene, trumpocene, uh, trumbocino, um, but it's smaller and. It's an alternative, really, to the um, courgette. And what's nice about it is there's no real seeds in it f for most of it. So the whole of the body of the of the um, centre cut squash and most of that head there, there's no seeds. Um, so it's really, you know, a lot of people really prefer it to uh, courgette, but it's hard to get hold of in this country. So I'm hoping to grow quite a lot and sow quite a lot of seeds and then uh, share them around because at the moment there's only one place you can get it from in America and I just happen to have some American friends that got me some so uh, then some celeriac and more many I've already sown many successions of uh, French breakfast radish and we're harvesting our first uh, ones of those we harvested the first ones last week I think and then we come on to the tomatoes and there's basically a very wide selection of tomatoes here um, we're still working on our favourites. Uh, lots of people recommended Sun Gold last year and when we sowed that, but we found it split a lot for us. Um, and since we're eating all of those fresh in salads, we don't really want the split ones. Um, but the reason I've got so many cherry tomatoes is that they're a staple for the um, uh, for the salad mixes, and I like to put a a big range of tomatoes in, in the salad mixes that we uh, pack up for everybody. Um, but then there's some bigger tomatoes as well and uh, cooking tomatoes and things like that. So quite a nice range. But obviously these are only the tomatoes destined for the polytunnel outdoor ones start next month. And then a second um, succession of Red Fugo. Um, and some more kales and other bits and pieces. Um, and and that, that's almost it, I think. And then there's just one more spinach and we're sowing, trying matador this year because um, apparently it doesn't bolt as quickly as uh, the other spinaches do as we get into sort of late summer, late summer, late spring. Um, so we'll see how long matador keeps going. Um, if anybody's tried it, I'll be interested to know how successful they've had, how successful they have been growing it in late spring. And then yet another succession of um, Oregon Sugar Pod Monish 2 peas. So that is pretty much it. And I thought I might just show you um, the harvests that we've done so far uh, this year. So um, it's not been many weeks so far, but uh, this is kind of what's become quite typical uh, for the harvest. There's two parts to that harvest there because we uh, can't fit everything into a single photo anymore. Um, but I think we're running at about, I don't know, is it 700 pounds worth, 800 pounds worth of veg or something so far this year. So. Um, yeah, it's been a really great year so far. Um, and I paid all my bills for everything. All my seeds, all my compost, all my nets, all my allotment rent, all my 
mushroom compost or my wood chip everything that i can think of uh, it's all paid off already and we haven't even finished february so that's a kind of nice position to be in so i think that is pretty much everything that i've got to show you so i hope you like that quick video and i hope you have a great march it's going to be exciting see you soon